Hey everybody. All right, I was going to tape this a few days ago and did not get around to it. So I do apologize for that. <clears throat> but I wanted to do the swatch for this uh, watercolor set of uh, 31 colors. Wait, 31. 33. <laughs> and um, I showed this up before. It's a silicone seal. There's a palette here. And um, <clears throat> I want to go, actually, I need to go more like this. Let me see if that's going to work. Um, let's bring it over a little bit. Hopefully, we have enough light. And I'm just doing the swatching. So that's it. And let's see what time it is. 2.30. All right, so my first color is going to be the Alzerian Crimson. So I'm going to just get started here. Um, I think I'll just go ahead and go straight on and just make sure I have enough water. So I like to try and make it as neat as possible. There's quite a bit of water in here. Probably could have gone with a little less, but um, so sometimes it's I'd like to have a little more color here. I'm gonna pull up some of this loose and maybe just touch. I want to show the depth of it as well, not just the light. So I feel like I've got too much water. Let's just see if I can get that how I want it to be. Anyway, it does give you the color. All right, we'll just go like that. Um, all right, next color is going to be the quinacridone, quinacridone red, um, which kind of has a bit of a pink or quinacridone rose, because yeah, it's got a bit of a pink to it. Um, could definitely be using less water, huh? All right. But I do want to show the variation of color. I don't want to have just a one flat color, but we'll see how that goes. All right, my next one is permanent rose. So let's see. Okay. That one looks. I 
a little bit different. They're close, they're very similar, but they are different. The next one is Scarlet Lake. I'm curious as to what this one is gonna be like. Ooh. And obviously, I've got an awful lot of freshness on this one. But it's a great red. I do like it. I wanna get some of my extra off so that it doesn't look too weird. Yeah, not bad, I like that. Okay, let's go with uh, the Fyral Scarlet, all right? This has more of an orangey hue to it, I feel like. Let's just change off some of that. Okay. Yeah, definitely this has more of an orange hue. Okay. All right, next color is a cadmium red pale light. So let's see what this one looks like. Definitely. <laughs> let's try and get some darkness to this. There we go. Definitely an orange, much oranger. Right. Finally got our vacation planned. Uh, we decided to postpone our trip to Tucson till sometime February or March. Uh, because there were, uh, my brother is moving his in-laws down in October, and so that was not gonna work, because it just wasn't gonna work. So we just changed. So this is cadmium orange. So we decided instead, I love this orange, to just take a week instead of two weeks right now, and um, go camping. So we're going to go camping the last week of September up on the first part of October up on the North Shore. Oh, that's a beautiful color. And um, this is a yellow ochre coming up. And we're going to camp and we're going to, we have up at Grand Marais, so probably a good halfway up, if not half, at least halfway up the North Shore of Lake Superior, and we're in a, the Grand Marais uh, in town campground, which is actually on the bay, on the lake, and we got a site right on the lake. So there weren't many sites left. It's a popular, anytime where it's getting to be fall, it's very popular, and it's very hard to get sites. And since we were encompassing two weekends, um, it was really definitely harder to find sites like we wanted. So I was happy to find finally find something. Hansa Yellow Light. This is a very bright yellow. Oh, I haven't painted for a few days. I really need to paint. It's always good. This one is called New Gamboge. It's, love this color. Look at this beautiful sunshiny 
sunflower color just beautiful I love this color so much can't even say how much I love it it's probably one of my absolute favorite yellows just so so pretty and then the last yellow in the line is cadmium yellow hue so let's see what this one looks like um, more of a cooler version of the yellow I like it too but that other one oof, that goldenish yellow I just love that but yeah this one is okay too it's actually a very nice a very nice yellow all right on to our next colors which are the greens so we have the viridian hue is first And I do, I have a lot of, I try to get a lot of different color greens and blues because the variety is so great. And I like doing botanical stuff. So I really like to have a good selection. And I can mix other things with these to change the, you know, the hue as I like as well. This next one is Hooker's Green Dark. So let me put that in. Anyway, we're, I'm looking forward to vacation. I, I think it's going to be good. I absolutely love the town of Grand Marais. It's very touristy and cute, and I just like it a lot. And, um, so you can see this one doesn't have much color to it. And this is the dark for the hooker's green. But it's a good green for plant stuff. Um, and then we have the hooker's green light. Um, but I want it to be where we could see the lake because I want to be able to paint the lake. So that is my reason for that. Okay, this is the Hooker's Green Pale, or Light. Okay, very different, right? That's really interesting. I wonder if they're different, just different, right? Sap Green. I love a sap green. This is my favorite green, probably my very favorite <laughs> green of all time. I just really, really like it. It's so good for plants. Um, just a beautiful color. Okay, the next green is olive green. Yeah, and then we're right like next to the Kichigami bike trail. I think that's what it's called. So my husband will be happy because he can bike. And we haven't gone up to the North Shore in a few years or camped up there in a long, long time. And it really used to be one of our favorite places to go. This is another green I really like. Um, but we just haven't gone. So I'm glad that we're gonna get the chance to finally do that. This is Indigo Hue. I love this color. Look at this. So beautiful. It's just a beautiful, beautiful um, blue. Really, really like it. Okay. Then, um, yeah, so I'm, it's going to be a full seven days, seven nights up there, um, which is going to be so wonderful. Really, really looking forward to just relaxing and um, going to the rock pebble beaches or the rock beaches and agate beach and looking for rocks and agates and sea glass. I really want to get some sea glass too. 
So my husband's like, he's preparing himself mentally for all the rocks I'm obviously going to bring back. <laughs> I just love that sort of thing. And, you know, we're, we're close enough, like, we're close enough to some of the state parks that have some really beautiful waterfalls. So I hope to get some good reference pictures, like, of the waterfalls. We have, there's a, a fair amount of waterfalls up there. And, um... It's gonna be great. Uh, wrong blue. Oosh, 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 oosh. <laughs> Let's see if I can get that mostly picked up. Not what I was thinking. Maybe I did do the right blue. Okay, this was that. I did do the right one. Here is <laughs> freaking out. Cobalt blue hue. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the French ultramarine, but only a little. Definitely a more vibrant blue. So yeah, I think it's it's going to be a good time to just relax, go somewhere we haven't gone before. Um, it's probably going to be pretty cool, cold even. It could be quite cold. Um, probably going to be mostly in the 60s. Could be lucky and get some temperatures in the low 70s. And evenings will probably be 40s, 50s right in there. So, um, But we have a trailer and we have heat. And campfires are great. So I'm not really worried. And it's nice that we're going to get a camping vacation in because we have not been able to camp hardly at all this year so I'm super happy about that okay so Thaleo blue is next that's a beautiful beautiful blue as you can see and my brush doesn't have enough water on it so let's add some water to this Oh, isn't it gorgeous? It's just a gorgeous blue. Okay. All right. And ultramarine blue is my last one. Now, this uh, was French ultramarine, and this is just ultramarine. Uh, it seems to be maybe a little more vibrant than the French ultramarine. And then you can, the good thing to do this is when you think of indigo, you might not think of this hue, but you can see how it dries to an uh, kind of a grayish blue, which is really what I wanted, so I'm happy about that. All right, up to the next one, and this is Purple Lake. So now we're going into the purple range. You will see that this is not necessarily that purple looking, but and it is. It's got purple in it. So you can see what this is like. Very different color. I'm trying to think like mulberry or plum or something like that. I don't know. The next one is di dioxazine purple, which I love this purple. This is just very purple, purple. <laughs> There's no denying purple. Okay. Okay. And then the next one is mauve. And I believe this is definitely a purple. Yeah, not quite sure why it's called mauve, but 
it, there you go, a little bit deeper than that dioxazine purple. And I just, I knew it was a more of a purple when I saw it. Um, I don't know where the names come from sometimes, because it is called mauve, but I don't see that as a mauve. So yeah. All right, next we have Indian Red. Mm, I love this color too. Some of these colors are just beautiful for you doing outdoors and botanical scenes. Um, this would probably be good for building as well. Just really pretty color, I really like it. All right, next is light red. So I'm curious to see how different this one is compared to this one here. Ooh, this one has got lots of rich color to it, doesn't it? Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. Wow. Just beautiful, okay? Then we've got raw sienna. So you have raw and burnt sienna and raw and burnt umber. So this is raw sienna. And these are, colors are really good too for your landscapes. This one is very light, as you can see. Very, very light. And I do like this for landscapes as well. Just a nice color, it really is. All right, um, next, got a couple things I wanted to close here. We have burnt sienna. So, burnt sienna right here. And then we have, okay. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm not like, sometimes, you know, it would be easy to just accidentally grab the wrong, the wrong thing. That would be awful. I love this color too. It's just a beautiful, beautiful color. Okay. Next we have uh, burnt umber. So these are much darker. The umbers are darker than the siennas. Nice brown color, really. And... Uh, Okay. Next I have raw umber. Okay. So you can see the difference in these two. Hopefully my lighting is good enough that you can see the difference. This feels like a cooler or a, a warmer. That feels like a, well, whatever. I look at it and I'm like, cooler, warmer, I'm not sure, but you can see the difference. All right, and then we have one of my other favorite colors, which is Payne's Gray. I love this color. Look at that. Isn't that stunning? Oh, I love this color so much. You know, that with the indigo, is fantastic because that gives you a really nice range of colors. Beautiful. And black. And I have ivory black. 
Um, I know some recommend Mars Black. I don't use black that much that for me to try and figure out uh, which which black I should use could be a little confusing. Maybe sometime when I feel a little bit better about my painting, I'll do a YouTube of me painting, but not yet. I could show you some of my paintings. <laughs> that should prove interesting. Maybe I'll do that quick before I end because that would be kind of different, right? All right, so I'm going to clean that up. Let me move my water. We don't want any accidents because that wouldn't be good. And I will just show you some of my painting. Um, and really, painting, so you can see, here's the colors. I'll move that over, just let that dry a little bit. Um, I've given, I have given some away. Um, I kept this one I have on the wall, because this was really my favorite loose, and when I felt like I really got the loose style down and captured it well. And then I've got uh, this one, this is a detailed, one of my favorites. So that's like an uh, aloe vera type plant. So let me just pin that back up here on my thing. It's not pinned, but it's held with little magnetic things on a magnetic board. So here's my other ones. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move this. So what I'll do is, this is my mixing tray, and this will go right here. Oh, dang it. I went and touched that. This will go right here. Not good if you're to mess up your swatching. <laughs> well, that was terrible. Oh, well. But yeah, I'm very happy with my my colors. But yes, I will show you some stuff I've done so you can you can see what it looks like. I have some plastic. This was just something I started playing around with and then I quit because it was horrible. Um, I have this one. This cactus one I did, I really liked. And this is a cactus one as well. This was just a loose play time uh, with colors. And then on the back, I was doing some purple stuff. So as you can see, none of it's all that great. This was a little experimenting I did uh, with the landscape. And then I was just doing some playing around here. So I need to just keep working on. I was just doing stuff. And I had a whole run of fern trying, which was trying indeed, but I'll show you. I didn't finish them all, but I did several starts. So I did kind of a, let's figure out colors and leaf styles. And then I did um, a start and I didn't like it. And here's another one where I kind of practiced different leaf styles, and then I did this one that I thought would be sufficient. And this was just a loose watercolor that I did. This was some leaves. This was another fern one. My fern ones need a lot of help. This one turned out really weird. This was a tulip one that I did. And this was just a play Again, I just was playing with color. And this was another tulip, kind of a tutorial tulip that I did when I was working on this one here. So that was that. Um, and then I was on a lilac spree. So I did this and this and this. And I did get a lilac one I really liked, but I gave it away to somebody. And then um, this one I did, 
as a project from a book called 15 Minute Watercolor Masterpieces. So this was one of the lessons in the book. And then I was practicing some loose roses. So I did those. And I did this, kind of another like mix of loose and darker things. This was a cactus one that I absolutely love. I'm very proud of that cactus. It was actually one that turned out quite, I was very happy with um, how it turned out, honestly, because sometimes stuff does not turn out that great, you know? So yeah, I really liked, I really liked that one. Uh, I'm gonna go through some of these, put some of these back in here because I got, sometimes I just paint on the back if I don't like them. But yeah, that was totally uh, one I worked on for a long time and I really, really like it. So that was my cactus. This was a galaxy one I did. So I painted all these first, and then I did black acrylic paint, and then I splattered with white gouache on this. Um, this is another one that's just uh, playing around. I thought, mm, maybe flowers or something. So there's ones I'm gonna just paint on the back of them. Um, uh, here's another, try it lilacs. <laughs> Some of these I'm just going to paint on the back because they're awful. Um, this was a cactus, kind of a desert scene that I took from a picture I had taken in um, Arizona. So I did really like that. And all these ones I should just be doing things with because they're disastrous. All right, and then... Yeah, so I did like that one a lot. And this was another kind of a lilac with ink one that I did. Um, not the best, but you know, it's okay. There's an orange one that I did. That was fun. Uh, more lilac and cactus. And then I just did some play with washes. It's good practice to do some things like this. This was one I did that I saw somebody had done and I um, did the same thing. This was a cherry blossom tree and another thing that I did from that same master, 15 minute masterpieces uh, watercolor book. And then this was one I did a big painting of, but I did it um, in watercolor, this first part, and um, yeah. I can't remember what I did that for now, but something had happened, and I did it. So I should put this one up because I do, this like is one of my favorites. So yeah, I'll put that one up someplace as well. Because when I do one that I think is really decent, um, excuse me, <laughs> I'm talking to the wind here, then I do like to at least put it up because I, if I like it, you know. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and um, see if I do any more of these. <laughs> All right, bye.